Leave him alone, Mary. Yeah. Told Mary to leave him alone. All right, can everybody hear me online? I think they're still in a meeting down there, building a ground. Should have done that. So I'm happy for them. I forget I'm live. You get me in trouble, Charlie. I'll just blame you. She didn't melt? <laughs> hey, I was talking about melting not because she was sweet. Alright, I think it's 7 o'clock, we can go ahead and uh, get started if that's okay with you Melba. I got a thumbs up from Melba. Alright, welcome to Wednesday evening prayer service. Uh, thank you all for coming, I'm sure you guys all floated here or brought your canoes. Because uh, from what I heard my office is still raining pretty good. Alright, I got to drive to the upstate tonight so I'm hoping that uh, at some point this stops. Uh, but yes, I'm going to drive to the upstate, spend a couple days up there in, in the mountains and in, enjoy some time. And this is my wife's idea, by the way. So if she's complaining on Sunday, remember I told you this was her idea for me to go to the upstate for a couple of days. So, um, welcome to Wednesday's, what's that? No, no, yeah, I don't know. I told her, I said, I can just go up there Friday and come back. So, this was her idea. But, uh... Let's go ahead and uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Richard, you mind opening us up in prayer? Amen. All right. So people are already um, on Facebook with prayer requests. But before we get to that, a couple of announcements. Um, we are going to have on November 29th, Sunday morning, um, Udo and Tabitha Moore. They are missionaries to Honduras. They run the Good Shepherd Children's Academy uh, right there near the Good Shepherd's Children's Home. But their family will be here Sunday morning on the 29th uh, to provide the, the, uh, some wor the, the word to us as well as whatever they, uh, God lays on their heart to share. So we will be taking up a love offering that morning. So please uh, uh, come with your pockets full uh, so we can support these missionaries and then on December 13th uh, Joseph Rebecca and their kiddos will be here that Sunday morning and uh, he'll be sharing the word and going over what's uh, happening in Honduras uh, right now so I'm really excited about November 29th um, I was able to get them my wife kept telling me you need to get a hold of them see if they have some time and luckily they had a couple of Sundays open still and one being the 29th so that'll be it's the fifth Sunday of this month as well so uh, I'm looking forward to having Udo and Tabitha and their family as well as Joseph and Rebecca uh, on the 13th of December so I think it's it I know we're coming up on Lottie Moon that's the end of the, this month so 
Uh, we're going to be asking for a lot. I know it's this time of year. Seems to always happen, no matter the size of the church. Um, oh, another announcement, there's a sign-up out here on the board. Um, Kevin Litchfield has asked if uh, anybody here would like to uh, support or sponsor a Christmas for a um, child that's in the foster care program. There's roughly 130 of them around this area, and uh, $25 gets a kid Christmas. And last year, they had churches and schools that participated. Well, this year... The schools are not able to participate like they were last year. Something happened, and maybe it's not even schools. I don't know. But uh, they're not, somebody who gave a bunch of money last year is not able to give a bunch of money this year. So they're relying solely on the churches to, to provide Christmas for these 130 kids. So if uh, you guys feel so led, it's 25 bucks. Uh, just put your name in a slot. Each slot's $25 um, unless you annotate that you're going to give more. Um, but uh, the Santee Baptist Association is asking uh, if the churches could support uh, some children. Make the check out to the church. Donna's already aware of it, um, and we'll just cut one check at the, uh, at the end of it and send it to them. So uh, anything else? Any other announcements? All right, good. All right, so we have quite a bit uh, to be praying for. And praying about um, Katina Miller put on here, pray for her mama, Carol, and her father-in-law, Ronnie Miller. Um, he's having his staples removed out of his back tomorrow. Um, Whitney Floyd put on here, please say a prayer for our injured football players. And I'm not, I'm not laughing. Our starting QB fell out of a truck today and fractured his left wrist. What makes this, the reason why I almost chuckled was because on Friday night he got injured on the field and it didn't look too good. It just rolled his ankle and leg a little bit awkward, but he ended up getting up, finished the game, even scored a running touchdown. Well, now he falls out of a truck today and breaks his left arm. So um, be in prayer for, for him and, and the team as they've got another playoff game this Friday. Um, a praise from Whitney as Uncle Craig is home and doing much better overall after an initial fever, return post-hospital discharge. So uh, Margie is on her way home. I talked to her on the phone. Before she went uh, to have the procedure, they had put a nerve block in, so she couldn't even feel her arm. Um, and then when I called her post-procedure, it had just worn off. So uh, she was feeling some pain. And she had told me yesterday that she was going to come home yesterday, um, but I guess that didn't happen. But she's on her way home now. Uh, Chris, I guess, went uh, to pick her up. Felicia's put a praise in that her mom is resting at home now. They made it back to Alaska at, like I said, 2 in the morning, I believe. Um, and then her dad put a post on Facebook as they were walking on their property. Uh, happy to be home. Teresa said her Aunt Barbara surgery went good. No cancer. Second surgery tomorrow. And then Amanda Sturkey. You remember Frank Sturkey? We've given him a letter, a friend of mine. Um, she put, we found that the cancer is everywhere. Uh, along with his lung disease. So uh, continue to pray for Frank and his family as they're dealing with that diagnosis. Um, thank you for that information. The only card that we have is for Margie. Is there anyone else that we need to send a card to? What's it hurt to send another one? I thought we did, but... Okay. Okay. Yeah. If she gets another one, that's okay. You get one to her, too. Anyone else? For card? Hazel, glad to see you here. Finally got a shirt you can wear. She is tough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, there's the, the two cards that we have. You got it, Freddie? All right. All right. Any other, any other prayer requests?
Who? Judy Coker and her son. Pray for Judy Coker and her son. And I'm sure you guys have seen, but states are starting to uh, close things back down. Uh, Tighten the reins again on establishments, what can be open, what can't be, how many people can congregate, how many people can't. So um, be in prayer for that as well. All right. Anybody else? Or any, any other prayer requests? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, Nancy. Okay, she's at home. So, remember Nancy, she had outpatient surgery today. Mandy, you're Nancy. Keeps me humble. All right, thank you. Any others? We need to give them a card then. Oh, he's got the pen. Who's got the pen? Ah, David. All right, what's the, what's the sister's name? May, May what? Galloway? have an address yeah it's to the family oh she doesn't have anybody else okay all right yeah because we put on there to the family of so yes ma'am okay so remember may galloway's family she passed away from cancer Any others? I was giving Hazel a hard time, but it's definitely good to see her back. I know, when I called you on the phone, you're like, why are you calling me? I'm I'm okay. I don't need you to call me. I said, I'm sorry, ma'am. What did I do, Mother Mary? Oh, Mother Mary's directing traffic. Got it. Okay. I'll get focused back on to what we're doing. Any other prayer requests before we go to the Lord in prayer? Melva's brother, what's his name? Gerald. Starting stem cell surgery tomorrow. Won't be home till after Christmas. Oof. That's tough. Can't remember Felicia. Her uh, surgery is the 17th, or the 19th. I keep saying the 17th. It's Thursday. A week from uh, tomorrow. So, keep her in your prayers. I think she's going to be overnight. I think is what she told me. So, means I'll be at home alone with the kids. But uh, any others? Prayers, praises? Oh, I bet. Are they going to knock him out? Okay. I mean, not good that they got to knock them out, but that's, <laughs> yeah. All right, so remember Sawyer. He's going to have some uh, procedures done in his mouth. Any others? 
I always wanted to be an auctioneer. I know there's schools for it. I had uncles that were auctioneers. And then I feel, that's what I always feel like on Wednesday evening prayer service, like going once, going twice, but I want to do it fast. All right. There's no other uh, prayer requests. I would ask, uh, Charlie, you mind praying for all those? Amen. Thank you, Charlie. So as Charlie mentioned in his prayer, today is a Veterans Day, and we actually have a few veterans with us tonight. Uh, Charlie served the United States Air Force. Uh, Richard, you were in the Army, weren't you? God bless you. So I was Air Force, so I'm going to pick on everybody but the Air Force. Huh? <laughs> All right, is there any other veterans that are with us here tonight? Oh, that I knew there was something with you, David. Huh? Uh, how many years? two and a half Vietnam time no that's what I'm saying because they had the two year uh, enlistments during the Vietnam era <laughs> well that, that too they drafted you and made you stay for a couple of years got it and then we know we got uh, Mr. Bruce I mean that man's 93 years old still kicking uh, working harder than any working harder than my 19 year old I know that um any other veterans that are with us this evening here in the service? All right. So um, I, I've, I've read this poem a few times, and I, I like it. Um, you know, when you're, when you're thinking, 
on Veterans Day, I think it, it really uh, speaks and it's profound in what it's saying. So I'd like to share it uh, this evening as we get started. And yes, there's going to be some scripture uh, tonight, of course. But the poem goes, it is the veteran, not the preacher, who has given you the freedom of religion. It is the veteran, not the reporter, who has given you freedom of the press. It is the veteran, not the poet, who has given you freedom of speech. It is the veteran, not the protester, who has given you freedom to assemble. It is the veteran, not the lawyer, who has given you the right to a fair trial. It is the veteran, not the politician, who has given you the right to vote. It is the veteran who salutes the flag, who serves under the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag. And I really love that poem, but I think, you know, we know that, yes, there are men and women that have served, and that's why we have days like today where you get to celebrate them, past and present. Uh, and then Memorial Day, you get, to, you get to thank those that have given the ultimate sacrifice. Um, you know, but I will tell you, as veterans, our mind always goes back to those that didn't make it back. Uh, and that last line really gets to me when it talks about the flag draped over the coffin. Uh, I had the pleasure of speaking at, a, at an event in Sumter called the Star Spangled Banner Project. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. Um, but it was about that time where the Star Spangled Banner was in the news a lot because of who wrote it. He was a slave owner, uh, just like anybody back in those times. But one of the things that I, I, had, I said that I, I saw is the person in the coffin did not matter the color of their skin. They all had the same flag that draped it as they were coming home defending it. So it is very important that we do always remember the veterans. We always pray for them. Thank you, Charlie, um, for your prayer uh, this evening as there's so many. I know Nick, uh, he, he's a veteran. He's out there in L.A. doing, I don't know, that man, he must be a glove for punishment. But a cop out there in L.A., we'll continue to pray for him. But this evening on Veterans Day, I want to turn our attention to what it means to be a soldier in God's army. How, however you, how many of y'all remember that song, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm in the God's army, yes sir, or Lord's army, I'm in the Lord's army. It's been a year, a few years since I've sang it, and you'd always stand up and march and you know, they get y'all whooped up and ready to fight the invisible bad people um, every Sunday morning in Sunday school. Well, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, Paul is telling Timothy how to be a good soldier for Christ. Now, if there is ever anyone considered a veteran in the Lord's army, I would think it would be Paul. Paul almost gave his life multiple times and ended up giving his life, thanks to Nero, to the cause of Christ. So as we think veterans that are on this, this earth that God has placed here and God has given certain skill sets to and, and God has blessed with the ability to serve, I think it's important that we remember also what it means to be a soldier for Christ. Because there's a, there's a few differences, right? I mean, if you guys remember that we're in the Army and then even in the Air Force now, we know in the Marine Corps when they're not uh, eating crayons and I've got buddies that are watching that are... Uh, for, uh, well, you're never a former Marine. You once a Marine, always a Marine. But, you know, it's always about physical fitness. Um, everything that you do is about your strength. How far you can run, how many pull-ups you can do, how many push-ups you can do, how many sit-ups you can do, uh, y you name it. And then when you start talking about going and getting training for combat, it's how much you can do with all that gear on you, how many hours you can spend in all that gear, to include sometimes you've got to put that mask on if there's a chemical threat, which adds... Uh, it makes you feel about 100 times hotter and like you can't breathe. But it, it's always about physical strength. But in, in the Lord's army, it's, a, it's, it's kind of the same. And Paul loses that, but it's really not about our strength. And we've talked about that. It's about his strength. And I would even tell you that, you know, soldiers and veterans, whether they know it or not, it's not about their strength either. We're free because of God. We're free because of Jesus Christ. Our country is blessed because of God. And the fact that he does give us men and women that are willing to sacrifice their lives for our freedoms. So this evening I want to talk about 2 Timothy chapter 2 and we're going to go verses 1 through 7. So Paul writes to Timothy, You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. 
It is the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. So in verse 1, the first word that I want to focus on is we must be strengthened. We must be strengthened. Now, again, does that mean that we go and hit the gym? Does that mean we go out and we run five miles, run around the city of Turboville? Obviously, you guys can tell I haven't done that. As soon as I retired, I don't even know what running is. I know what getting up out of my recliner and going to the fridge is. Obviously, a little too much. But how are we to be strengthened as Christ followers? Well, he says it right here, by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So what is grace? Grace is unmerited favor of God. It's gifts that God has given us. It's the gift of life. It's the gift of salvation. It's grace. It's the forgiveness. That's where we draw our strength from. Now, you, you may ask, well, how does that work? Well, if you think about it, if, if you know how much you have been forgiven, it makes it that much easier to forgive others. It gives you the strength to be able to forgive others. Because we know how down and dirty and disgusting and horrible we are as human beings, our sinful nature, and God sent his perfect son to die on the cross for us. So our strength as soldiers in the Lord's army comes from his grace, the grace of Jesus, that is in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 2, And that which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. We are supposed to entrust. We are supposed to trust. We are supposed to entrust one another. We are supposed to trust and, or entrust others to go and share the gospel. But that only happens when we trust others enough to go up and tell them about the gospel. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? If, if you look at somebody and be like, nah, they look too stinky, they look too dirty, they look too homeless. Um, I don't know about y'all, but my wife's got me hooked on Criminal Minds right now. Who watched Criminal Minds when it was on TV? Man. That thing. So you look, at, you look at this show and it makes you not want to trust anybody. Matter of fact, that show is so in detail that the original um, guy that was the, the genius that could uh, profile anybody, uh, he ended up leaving the show because it said it was not good for his psyche. It was not good for his spiritual well-being. Um, I read an article up on it. So after like three seasons, the original uh, profiler, he left Gideon, which is the show, his name in the show, but a new guy's there, and he's been there for a few months. But, you know, when you watch the show, you don't want to go talk to nobody. You don't know who's going to tase you in the back or throw you in a van or, you know, go and dissect you for science because they're just that crazy. But we're supposed to trust. We're supposed to trust that God has our back. We're supposed to trust that God is going to honor what we're doing if it is for him. You know, I'm not ignorant to think that God didn't show us some favor on homecoming when we had all those people packed in here because of things happening. And that's because we trusted God that day. And we allowed him to work. And it wasn't what we did, it was what he allowed us to do and what he did on that day. So we're supposed to entrust. If we are in, in, in Christ's army, we're supposed to trust and entrust. Trust God and then entrust others. Now, I'm not telling us to go out here and and. and, and trust somebody who we know is not a good character of good character a bad actor right i'm saying we're supposed to at least entrust each other we're supposed to trust excuse me each other especially if we claim to be christians and we belong to the same church you know the body of christ so we're supposed to we're supposed to trust we're supposed to entrust and there's a little bit of faithfulness in there too if, if you read that verse not a little bit there's a lot of faithfulness in there because in order for us to be able to entrust and share the, the, uh, the gospel and, and to other faithful men and teach others also, we're supposed to have faith. We're supposed to have faith. So then in verse um, number three, share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ. Now, I really like you know, what Paul it, it wrote there, share in suffering. Because I'll tell you, there was nothing more when I was in the military that would bring folks together than for, the, for life to stink. I'm not going to use the word that we use, but it was embrace the stink, if that makes sense. You may have heard it the other way. Um, and if everybody went through the same training, everybody lived in the same, you know, hangar or slept on the same desert floor or, you know, uh, ate the same MREs, uh, the meals ready to eat, those things that are, you know, in the, 
in the bags or you ate UGRs, unit grade rations, which were nothing more than big MREs. And so what, the food wasn't no better, so you ended up not even going to the, what was the DFAC, the uh, defense fighting, or the uh, yeah, gone, dining facility, DFAC. So, uh, but when everybody suffered the same stuff, that brought us together. That brought us together. You know, when, when we're on the road in Afghanistan and you're swapping stories and you're sitting next to the same stinky interpreters, nothing worse than being stuck in an MRAP. You know, the, everybody knows what an MRAP is, right? These big armored vehicles. You're stuck in this thing, and the ACs don't work in those things. It's 800 degrees, and they put the interpreter in there with you. People, we got real close. For some reason, the interpreter was always stuck on the opposite wall, and then there was about six or seven of us over on this wall, depending on who was in that MRAP, right? And, and So anyway, but you get what I'm saying. You're supposed to share in the suffering. What's well, the same thing for Christ followers? It's the same thing for soldiers in God's army. And don't mistake it, every single person sitting in here is a soldier in his army. You, and you weren't drafted like some folks uh, were uh, in the army, as David uh, told us about. But, you know, we are all soldiers in his army as soon as we accept his gift of salvation. We are soldiers in his army. So we're supposed to share in the suffering. Now, again, that does not mean that we take somebody's monkey off their back and put it on ours. That's not what I'm saying. But we should all know the persecution of what it means to be a Christ follower. That we're not looked upon very highly in society as a whole. Right? People only want churches to be out and about when they need something. Think about that. It's almost like first responders, right? Firemen and police... Uh, especially firemen, you know, they were just overpaid babies with recliners and big screen TVs. And then 9-11 happened and all of a sudden they were heroes, right? And it was kind of the same thing in the big cities, you know, nobody wanted to pay the taxes to pay the first responders until a major incident happened and then it was all over the news. Well, that's kind of how Christians are, right? Nobody wants to hear our theology. Nobody wants to hear about Jesus Christ. Nobody wants to hear about how there's something that can make their life better. They just want us to come out there and make their life better and then come in here and be quiet. So there's a share suffering. And I bet that truck is like that. God, that makes me so mad. Um, But so we're supposed to uh, share in our suffering. Just like our soldiers and airmen and and everybody else here on this earth do. Same thing with being a soldier in Christ. We're supposed to share in the suffering. So what does that mean? To me, that means if you know of a certain area where they don't serve or they're not very uh, nice to Christians, you don't go in there and act like you're one of their best friends, right? Or you don't say, I'm not with them, act like Peter did before the, the, the rooster crowed, right? If you're a Christian, you're a Christian. If you're part of the church body, if you're part of the body of Christ, you're part of the body of Christ. And it doesn't matter what's going to happen to us. It doesn't matter what, who's going to come through those doors because at some point it's going to come to that. At some point it, it, it's going to come to that. Um, I, I pray that God comes before then, but uh, I don't know. I've read Revelations like everybody else has. But there's a share, we're supposed to share in our suffering as a good soldier of Christ. So then in verse 4 it says, No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. So, um, the civilian pursuits, you know, I, I think of that one, um, uh, you got to forgive me, but uh, I'm going to say it. Well, back in the 90s, marijuana was still legal in the state of Alaska. But if you were in the military in the state of Alaska, it was illegal, right? So, if you were a civilian, you could do this. If you're a military, you cannot. Well, it's the same thing in the Lord's army. There are things that are legal. There are establishments that are legal that we shouldn't entangle ourselves in. That we shouldn't be seen inside. That our vehicle maybe shouldn't be seen parked outside. Right? We are not to get entangled in civilian pursuits. We're not to get entangled in worldly pursuits. I'll say it that way. In worldly pursuits. Now, you've got to understand when Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, a lot of the folks that he was talking to were uh, Roman soldiers, retired Roman soldiers that didn't want to leave where they were at. 
So that's why you see a lot of, a lot of the, the wording that's being used. So we're not supposed to get entangled in worldly pursuits. And why is that? And that is because our aim should be to please the one who enlisted us. Our aim should always be to please God. Is what we're doing pleasing to God? If we can say no, then it's probably a worldly pursuit. It's probably a worldly pursuit. If we can say yes, then we're aiming to please the one who enlisted us. And then Paul goes on to start talking about athletes. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's funny because, you know, even in the military, uh, you, you know, you didn't finish your enlistment if you didn't follow the rules. You would get what they called a bad conduct discharge, um, which would really affect you as far as you, you lost any money for school, um, it was on your record when people would do checks, you know, when you go and apply for a job, they knew what kind of discharge you would get. A lot of folks think that, you know, they tell folks they don't. Well, you're right. If you go work at McDonald's, they don't care. I mean, I, and I'm not trying to be ugly. But, like, if you're trying, if you want to be an engineer and if you want to be, you know, you want to go work with David Nesbitt, he's going to probably find out, you know, the status of how you were discharged. Well, it's the same thing with what Paul is talking about. You know, if we are to get to heaven, now our, our salvation is not works-based. Everybody understands that, right? Our salvation is not works-based. However, if we say we're a Christian, but then we're at the bar or the strip club on the weekends, what's, what kind of fruit are we showing? What kind of fruit are we showing? If we're out running around on, behind our wives' back with other women, if, if women are running around with, on, behind their husbands' back, they're not following the rules as Paul's putting it in here, right? So are they truly saved? That's going to be my first question if anything comes up like that. But we're, you're not going to get a reward. Just because you say you're a Christian, just because maybe you had come to the front in front of everybody and had that moment, just because you say you are saved, maybe you're not saved. And I'm not trying to put doubt on anybody. I'm saying the actions tell us. The actions tell God. The heart tells God whether you're saved or not, right? Everybody understands that? So what I'm saying is, what Paul is talking about, um, an athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Well, as a Christ follower, what are we supposed to do? Glorify God in everything that we do. Love God with our whole mind, body, heart, and soul. Love one another. Love our enemies. Love our neighbors as ourselves. Everybody getting what the rules are here? How we're supposed to live? Well, if we don't live that way, we're not going to get the reward that's in heaven. We're not going to get the reward that is in heaven. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. So, <clears throat> Paul is finishing up these last couple of verses, and I know there's a whole chapter. But he says, um, in verse 6, it is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Right? So, what do we always talk about when we talk about, um, uh, I'm saying I'm a lot tonight, but when we go out and we, we harvest, right? The field, the field is ripe with a harvest, right? But the laborers are few. What, that's what he's talking about. So if we're out there doing the Lord's work, we're, we're going to harvest. We're going to reap the benefits. We're going to reap the, the heavenly rewards. We're going to reap the crowns. We're going to reap the jewels, all that stuff. But that's not why we do it. That's not why we do it. We do it to honor and glorify God. We do it to honor and glorify God. So he's saying if the, um, it is the hardworking farmer. So take farmer out of there. It is the hardworking Christian. It is the hardworking Christian. And I would, I'd be lying to you if I stood up here and said I felt like that was me. Especially when you start trying to put yourself next to Paul. And I'm not saying that's what we're doing, but... You know, if, if you really think about what God is asking us to do, are we really doing it? Are we really out there sharing the love of Jesus Christ? Are we really out there loving our neighbors? Are we really out there loving our enemies? Are we really out there hard working? Yeah, I mean, we're hard working, right? We're all tired at the end of the day. But are we hard working on what God has called us to do? And that's tough, right? Because I honestly don't think, because even if you heard, heard Billy Graham at the end of his life, I honestly don't think, it doesn't matter how hard we work, it's never going to be enough 
because we know how much of a sacrifice God made for us. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't be hardworking and out there doing what he uh, enlisted us to do. In verse 7, it talks about the Lord will give you understanding in everything. And I, I hope so. I appreciate that. Um, or not, not I appreciate that, but I'm looking forward to that because I pray for understanding every day. I pray for wisdom and knowledge every day because uh, I am not the smartest individual. Uh, I call myself a knuckle dragon mouth breather. That's about the best you're going to get out of me. Um, but it's important to remember on this, on this honored day, Veterans Day, and all of our veterans, but remember we are all veterans, Christians. We are all in, in service as soldiers in the Lord's army. And there are certain things that are required of us. And we must follow them. We must do them. Because if we don't, then we're not going to get our rewards. As a matter of fact, we're going to get what we deserve. Everybody understands that, right? I think America is getting exactly what it deserves right now. You know, when COVID started back in February, where, I mean, it was way prior to that. But when COVID first started happening, I remember hearing so many preachers and so many people talking about, we need to humble ourselves and pray. And I know I sound like a parrot repeating myself, but I don't know if we've truly humbled ourselves. I don't know if we've, because, you know, people that have humbled themselves are not fighting and arguing over things that are mundane and minute in the grand scheme of things. I'm talking about the body of Christ. We, the church has not humbled itself. Because it's still segregated. It's still very opinionated about one political party over the other. We haven't humbled ourselves to the one who holds the highest office. The one who's in control. And I think once we do that, then we're going to see some changes. Then we're going to see revivals that we've been praying about. But it's tough right now. It's going to be tough for a little while. But we're going to get through it because God is in control. So that's my Veterans Wednesday night message. I hope you got something out of it other than, you know, you're not saved. That's not what I was trying to say. Uh, I don't want you to doubt your salvation. Uh, not what I was trying to say there either. But uh, you know me. I just say things and then hopefully you all forget about them if it wasn't what God wanted you to hear. So, before we close, any, any last-minute uh, prayer requests? All right, I got you, Alan and Victoria. They said uh, their son, Jalen, is a Marine, um, and they're getting married this Saturday in Germany, uh, their son and daughter-in-law. So, uh, Jalen Bailey and Kira Andre, they're friends of mine from Sumter. They own uh, Harler Trophies. Boltman. I met them when I was in the military because we used them for all of our awards, the inscriptions and the. So. All right. No other prayer requests before we close? Thank you. Eddie Phillips. Yeah, I keep. I got him right here, too. Keep praying for Eddie Phillips. Thank you. All right. Donald, do you mind closing us in prayer? Thank you. See you all Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Lord willing.